After it is designed, but before it can be occupied, a building must be constructed. This is the story of the construction of Milstein Hall at Cornell University. The stone veneer fascia and aluminum soffit are part of the building enclosure system of Milstein Hall. Other elements of this system are discussed elsewhere in this video series. Aside from the reinforced concrete dome, foundation walls, and ground level slabs, these enclosure elements are supported by the steel structural frame. We start with the fascia. The outside steel trusses already have angled outriggers welded to their top and bottom cords. Shelf angles are welded on site to these outriggers, which hold up heavy gauge steel studs, also field welded in place. Much like an ordinary stud wall, exterior gypsum sheathing boards are screwed into these studs, forming a rigid substrate to which the required control layers and cladding will be attached. Because the entire floor-to-ceiling opening will be glazed, the sheathing consists only of two horizontal bands corresponding to the position of the floor and ceiling structure. In a prior video, we examined in detail how the steel framework supports outriggers, a steel stud wall with gypsum sheathing, a glass curtain wall, and an air barrier system, including both rubberized and stainless steel flashing materials. These are necessary steps leading to the installation of stone veneer fascia and aluminum soffit panels. Once the air barrier is complete, insulation can be adhered to it, but first, steel clip angles are attached through the air barrier and sheathing to the same metal studs that support the sheathing. These clip angles are rather long considering that they only need to provide one point of support for the stone veneer. However, their length is determined not by the point of support they provide for the stone, but rather by the requirement that they be attached to at least two metal studs. Because each piece of stone needs four supports, one at each corner, and each point of support in turn needs a clip angle spanning two studs, there ends up being quite a bit of clip angle material attached through the sheathing. This is not a problem for the stone, but it does create quite a bit of thermal bridging, since the insulation must be cut around these highly conductive metal pieces. Major thermal bridging also occurs where uninsulated exterior columns penetrate the dome and soffit. Here we see columns in relation to the frame above, and here is a column, still uninsulated and directly connected with the interior steel framing elements being painted. Another area of thermal bridging occurs at building separation joints along the perimeter of the studio floor and roof, adjacent to Rand and Sibley Halls. And finally, a series of metal bollards placed directly overheated basement space are fastened not to the surface of the topping slab, but to the structural slab below. In this way, they interrupt all the layers of rigid insulation placed between the structural and topping slabs, forming a direct conduit for heat loss. But back to the stone veneer. Small angles are screwed into the clip angles to support the stone. These clip angles are positioned with plastic shims, not shown in this diagram, so that they are at precisely the right height. The fourth control layer is the insulation, and it must be outside the air water vapor barrier to keep it warm during cold weather. The stone panels have metal plates fastened to their inside surface, into which the small angles screwed into the clip angles earlier are inserted. The stainless steel flashing provides a drainage channel for any water that might get into this cavity through the open joints of the stone veneer. Meanwhile, a topping slab is cast over the structural slab and a backing rod is inserted and then gray sealant is applied between this topping slab and the curtain wall tees. After a grid of metal supports has been fastened to the underside of the structure, spray-on polyurethane foam insulation covers the underside of the structural slab and steel beams. The grid supports four-foot square stamped aluminum panels that form the soffit or finished underside of the building. Well, that gives an overview of the enclosure system. Back to the actual construction process, here we see the glass being masked so that the air barrier can be sprayed on. Once in place, the air barrier is marked up to show the position of studs so that clip angles can be screwed into them. At this point, rigid insulation is attached directly to the air barrier. It needs to be cut to fit around the clip angles. Then, a special purpose adhesive is used to actually attach the panels. A metal tape is pressed in place at the position of the open stone joints. I've been told that it's part of the waterproofing system, but in reality, water is able to enter this cavity at any point through the open horizontal joints above the stone panels, and not just through the open vertical joints where the tape is applied. 
On the other hand, because extruded polystyrene insulation may be damaged if exposed to sunlight for extended periods of time, it's not a bad idea to protect the insulation from such exposure by covering it in this way. The tape is then spray painted black so that the uniform visual appearance of the facade is not interrupted by reflected sun bouncing off the metal surface of the tape at the open joints. Now the stone stockpiled on the roof can be lowered into place. Let's take a closer look at the support system. There's a, an angle that bolts to the sheetrock mm -hmm. and through the metal studs and, and then there's another angle that sits on top of it pointing up that this catches and slides down onto. Special holes with reverse tapers are cut into the back of the stone panels by rotating a special drill bit into the stone. The head of the bolt is then inserted and slid up into the slotted hole so that it cannot pull out, and a metal plate is tightened against the circular shims. These shims create a space between the metal plate and the back of the stone so that the plate can engage the small metal angles attached to the clip angles that have been fastened through the fascia sheathing. Here we see the height of these metal angles being adjusted by adding shims just above the larger clip angles to which they are attached. Back on the roof, a specially built scaffold is put into place with a long beam cantilevered over the edge of the roof and a half-ton capacity winch that will lift the panels up over the protective railing and down into position. The stone panels are each marked to identify their position. After four metal support plates are bolted to the back of a panel, it is wheeled over to the scaffold and attached to the winch. Final measurements are taken, and the metal plate is cut in order to align with the position of the angle below. These measurements are not always precise, but further adjustments can be made if necessary by adding or removing shims from the supporting angle. As I'm filming through the third floor window of Sibley Hall, the stone installation contractor explains why this particular scaffolding system is being used. Next to that stairwell, there's a, a pit that goes all the way to the ground, so somehow I needed to get it was easier for me to put the stone up here and, and wheel them down and grab them from here and drop them over than it was the, down there. There's all kinds of pogos in the way and it was easier just to be up here by myself. So. The stone panel is lowered down and set into place with the stone's metal plate sliding over the waiting angle. Except it doesn't quite fit. The workers lift the stone away from the wall and cut the metal plate just a bit more. This process is repeated several times, still without success. So they're uh, getting ready to put that stone back in place after adjusting it a number of times, cutting the little angles, grinding them down a bit, in and out until they get it level. So this is about the third or the fourth time. And here it comes. The workers try again using a handheld mirror to look behind the stone to see why it can't be pushed into place. Let's listen in as they try to work out an ad hoc field remedy. I don't want to, I got, right now I got a quarter of an inch for that to hang on. I really don't want to take off no more. Can you grind it down so it's not as thick? It's possible, yeah, I can probably do that. And so the stone is finally set in place. The last thing to note about the stone veneer are the letters carved into the panels on the east facade, made using parallel vertical cuts. Between the first and second level glazing, a soffit will be hung from the structure above. First, hangers are attached to the steel deck above on a four-foot module and can be seen extending down through the spray foam insulation that completely covers not only the steel deck, but also the beams, girders, and hybrid truss cords cantilevering over University Avenue. Angled elements keep the hung structure from displacing laterally. A four-foot square grid of horizontal elements is then attached to these hangers to support individual aluminum panels. These panels are punched with a grid of small holes. Such holes allow sound waves to pass through the panels where they can be absorbed by acoustic insulation inserted above the panels where needed for acoustical control. An elaborate spring-loaded support and attachment system is built into each panel. They'll have a spring on them. Uh huh. And then it just pops up in there, kind of like a can light when you put a cover up in. Uh huh. Spring, and then the exterior, I'll have a clip here after the panel's installed. 
and just screw up into the ceiling grid in the main ah. so she don't fall down. The panels are fastened into the grid and cut around the complex geometry of the first floor glazing support walls that drop down from the structure above. Here we see workers lifting a panel into place, attaching the spring-loaded wire, pushing the panel into place, held there by the spring-loaded clip, and then screwing the panel into the grid through the tabs that extend into the panel joints. The final cantilevered soffit appears pretty much as promised in the early renderings of the project.